Hi, this is Talon Jane. This is my FTT 201 Firearms Finishes and Engraving Week 7 Hydro Dipping Project video. It's a mouthful. So, uh, this is a project that I've been looking forward to since I started at SDI. Um, I've been researching like nobody's business. I can't even tell you how many videos I've watched and how many websites I've visited and everything else. So, I'm really excited about this um, and getting this done. We're gonna go through what comes in the kit from SDI. Um, then we're going to go through some of the stuff that I did a little bit differently than maybe some of the other uh, students' videos that you've seen in the past. And uh, <clears throat> then we're going to uh, get started in hydro dipping. So uh, enjoy the video, thanks. All right, so here it is. Here's the uh, hydro dipping kit that you received from SDI as part of the FTT. 201 uh, class. Um, let's see here. The kit comes with the dip kit manual. Some real basic instructions in here. Then we have our dip kit base color, which I don't want to fool you. It says white, but it's probably you can't tell. So we'll see, that'll be a surprise. I have a feeling it's a light tan. That seems to be what I see on all of the other uh, SDI videos that you'll see on YouTube and whatnot. So uh, then we have the activator, hydro dip activator, and a hydro dip clear coat. This is a matte clear coat, meaning not shiny. And then inside of this little bag here, I got my knife here. So it looks like we've got a red scouring pad, a pair of pair of gloves, a <laughs> bent up little uh, paintbrush thing, some easy wipes, multi-purpose industrial cleaning wipes. Um, yeah, it looks like, like a degreaser of some type. And then a tack cloth, that's nice. And the film. Oh, and it looks like it's a oh, packing slip. Okay, so with the film, <clears throat> I'm gonna be brutally honest here. I have yet to see an SDI uh, project finished that uh, I actually thought turned out well. And I don't think it has anything to do with the students' projects or what they're doing or anything like that. I just, I'm not a fan of the film that comes uh, from them, which uh, the reason I lay out this white piece of paper is so you can kind of see it. Uh, it's kind of a, I don't know, a weird woodland type of camo. That light tan just does not lend itself. I mean, it's just kind of blotchy or whatnot, so. But we have that, so that's what we're gonna use. Uh, so, because I want to do something that looks cool, I also got my own hydro dipping film and I ordered a different base coat from One Hit Wonder. And I'm not going to show you this one yet. You'll have to stay and watch the whole video to see what this ends up being. Um, but I'll show you what we're going to be dipping here. So for the SDI dip, We'll be dipping this lower. This is not a good useful lower. This is a lower from what's called an OA-96. Um, I just forcefully removed the magazine from it. If you're not familiar with an OA-96, but you're looking at this, you might think that there's some, some things missing and you'd be right. There's no magazine release buttons. Uh, there's no hole for the buffer tube. So uh, I encourage you look up the OA-96. You'll understand why I had no problem kind of destroying this uh, for my SDI dip. Uh, but this is going to be the lower that I do with uh, this pattern here. And then as a bonus, uh, we're gonna do this lower, which is a milled 80% lower. 
This is a ghost gun. Um, this one is a Noreen Arms uh, lower uh, that's been completely milled out, is ready to go. But as you can tell, it doesn't have a finish on it. So we're going to rectify that. And we're going to use the mystery, mystery tube here with the mystery base coat uh, to, to do this particular lower. So uh, the next thing you'll see me doing is we're going to prep these and we're gonna prep these using kind of a at home method. Um, I ordered a sandblast kit as part of this, a sandblaster uh, cabinet as part of this class because I'm interested in the firearms and finishes. So, uh, but it doesn't get here till next Wednesday. So, unfortunately, I'm not able to sandblast this like I'd like to. So, we will be using the red scouring pads and I got some more and uh, some acetone. And we're going to really get these down to um, as, as close to uh, stripped and degreased as we possibly can. I don't know the history of this particular lower. Um, I kind of happened across it, so um, I can just feel that it feels like there is some, some oil and grease in here, so it's gonna take a little bit. Uh, this particular dip, I'm going to have to do in two stages. Um, this one I could probably get away with rolling on this uh, pattern here, um, or even just doing a straight down and kind of, you know, rocking to get that pattern uh, onto this. However, because I'm using this one as practice for this one, and the pattern that I'm doing on this one has an orientation to it, I'm gonna treat this one the same way uh, since I'm using it like practice. So I will dip half of it, pull it out, uh, let it dry, retape it, and then dip the other half uh, in this pattern here uh, so that when I go to do this one, in the different pattern, uh, you'll see um, you'll see that we've already done that method once, and and hopefully hopefully we work out the bugs on this one. So I worked really hard over the last week to build a hydrographic dip tank. Um, it's still an at-home dip tank, but it's maybe just a little bit more than a Rubbermaid tote, and I'll show you that when we get out to the shop. Um, but for now, the next thing you'll see is me stripping these down. All right, stay tuned, thanks. All right, so now we're gonna do the prep work on these two lowers. I'm doing this in the kitchen because if the rest of you are anything like me, your wife absolutely loves when you do gun projects in the kitchen. <laughs> She's giving me a look right now, but. Uh, so to start with, I'm just gonna use Dawn dish soap. This is a great degreaser. I'm gonna use this to just basically get started especially on this one that I don't know the backstory, if it's been used, if it's got oil all over it, whatever. I'm using these red scouring pads. Um, so I'm just gonna take this with some hot water and we're gonna go and really try and, uh, what's the term, scuff, scuff the entire thing. So the cool part about doing this this way is um, this, uh, scouring pad and the soap I'm kind of degreasing washing cleaning and scuffing all in the same step
So I'll finish drying all these up and then uh, the next thing you'll see we'll be doing, it'll be taping these off. Yep, I just realized it needs to be painted first. So I lied and I said the next thing you'd see was me painting or er, taping. The next thing you'll see me do is putting on the base coats. Oh, well, pardon me, Mr. Perfect. I guess I forgot that you never ever make a mistake. Okay, to start, we're going to focus on SDI's film with this lower. And you see I'm wearing a fresh set of gloves again. Uh, full disclosure, you know, after I washed them, I went downstairs and started to tape them. Realized you still have to be at their base coat before you tape. So there we are, you know, back out here again. And I already wiped them back down with acetone, so we're back to clean again. So what we're gonna do first is measure out our film and uh, ensure that we have the right size so that after we spray, we're ready to dip. So when I was researching for doing hydro dip, there's like a huge split when it comes to tape versus no tape versus whatever. And I think uh, a lot of the pros have gotten to the point of no tape. A lot of the newbie people, they do the full tape border. Almost everybody now is adding a vent, you know, so that it can expand a little bit when you put it in the water. I think what I'm going to do is I'm gonna build the tape border and then I'm gonna put lots of vents along it kind of a hybrid between the two styles. Um, I think it'll still allow it to expand, but it'll give it, it'll keep it from rolling, you know, kind of a, like I said, a hybrid between the two. So, that goes down. Down at the most people say get your finger a little bit wet, which I just did in the tank, and then you squeeze it. Whichever side it sticks to, that's the side that goes down. So you see it sticks up there. I'm gonna go ahead and lay this the other way so I can remember that it's the curl side down. This tape that I got is the real gentle stuff, so it it uh, doesn't stick nearly as good as like the blue tape or whatever else, but it's not necessarily a bad thing. All right, let's go ahead and get set up for our base coat. Quick check on our water on our way over here. We're up to 84 degrees, so we're doing pretty good. All right, with the respirator on, we're going to uh, spray this a couple seconds, and then uh, just to clear it out, it's been shaking for about two minutes. And what we're going for is, uh, looks like it's a puke colored tan. And we're gonna go with a nice light, even coat.
All right, we're back, and uh, we're back, and we're about to do another coat. Uh, this one is all dulled up again, and it's not wet anywhere. So we're gonna go ahead and get another coat on here. Uh, I'm thinking we're probably gonna do. I'm gonna say four coats, but we'll see how what where we end up at. Back for round three, round three. So here we go. All right, here we are at round four, final round. Uh, I'm just gonna make sure that there's no other light spots, that it's an even color. All right, while we finish spraying, our tank got up to temperature. We're sitting at 86. Uh, I'm gonna be using tape borders for now. Eventually, I'd like to create some plexiglass that I can kind of slide into each one of these to determine, but this will work fine for me being able to put it in there and, uh, and do our dip. So I'm gonna be doing the dip right about here, uh, kind of going in at an angle. So once I lay the filament, the film, I'll take the uh, the other um, tape that I've got pulled out already and do the other side uh, once it expands and contracts again. All right, there it is in all its glory, finished, painted, and dried. So uh, we've got the film ready to go. We've got the bath ready to go. I'm gonna get a timer, move the camera over there. We're gonna lay the film onto the water. We're gonna let it sit. Then once it expands and contracts, we'll spray the activator, which honestly is my biggest fear in this whole thing is the activator, um, either over activating it, under activating it, uh, but we'll get that going and then uh, we'll do our dip. I am not going to tape for this first round. I'm not worried about it over, um, over going on any parts of it. Uh, if this ever ends up on a firearm, the upper may not match up directly with this lower, so you'll want the pattern to be on the top here as well, just in case. So uh, let me move the camera and get a timer and we'll get going. All right, we're about to get started. Uh, I bumped up the temperature a bit. It's at 87.6. Um, should be good anywhere between 85 and 90, so uh, we should be good to go. I'm about to set my timer, turn off my text messages, set my timer uh, for 60 seconds. So that as soon as I lay the film down on the water, I'll start the timer, I'll put the other border up, I'll get my wife's uh, sous vide out of, out of the tank, and then uh, we should be good to go. So here we go. seconds. Trying to find a good spot for the pattern. Going in at a 30 degree angle here.
first side. All right, we're back at the sink. I'm gonna rinse this for about three minutes. All right, I don't know if you can tell. The water's really gross now. So what I'm gonna do is turn on this pump. Theoretically, I should push all of the film magma stuff over to one side. This should be doing a pretty good job. Now you can see all of that. And we're going to lay this out very gently. Better. No air bubbles this time. Okay. Wait for it to do its thing. And there it goes. Start our timer. I should say here again. Okay. seconds. I think we have the right amount of activator. This stuff comes out really poorly. I'd like to try the spray gun version. Okay, sprayed. Now this time, Better. A lot more different variations on that side.
All right, so this is a second layer of our clear coat. Um, overall, I have mixed feelings about the results here. It, uh, it doesn't look terrible. It kind of looks like battle fatigue, desert, you know, camo. Um, I think my biggest issue is I probably didn't let the base coat um, dry long enough. So I'm definitely gonna do a little bit more drying, maybe even set up a heater when I do the other base coat for the other lower. Overall, this kind of has an interesting look to it. It's not something I would sell or use on my own firearm, but it was a good learning experience. So I'm um, gonna take that as a win. Uh, I'd say overall it's a C for result and an A for effort. So. Uh, we're going to go ahead and add our second clear coat here. All right, we're back. It's, uh, I don't know what day we're on now. 20, no, I think it's like day three. Um, today we're going to do the 80%. And so you'll get to see the mystery film and base coat. Uh, I've heated up the shop. We're sitting at about 78 degrees in the shop. The tank is up to 90. I uh, fired up the forge just to warm up the shop and uh, it's kind of got some radiant heat going on. So when I finish all the coats, I'm gonna hang this over kind of by the forge and. You know, it won't really bake, but hopefully we'll get a good dry on it. I have a feeling that that's what caused the last dip to have some issues, but we'll see. So next I'm going to, um, because it's been a day, I'm going to go ahead and wipe this down one more time with the acetone just to make sure that there's no oil on it. And then we'll go ahead and do our base coat. So I'm, uh, I'm really excited to try this base coat. It's a uh, one hit wonder. And uh, they custom make each one of their base coats. And um, I ordered this a couple weeks back in preparation for this project. Uh, this is what a lot of the guys on YouTube recommend. So we'll see if it goes on a little thicker or the same or whatever, but it's a adhesion promoter, primer and base coat in one, kind of like the other one. So we'll see. If anything, this stuff goes on even thinner. All right, we're about to do coat number two. All right, so we finished our base coats. We stopped at four. I'm affectionately referring to this metallic yellow color as don't tread on me yellow. And we'll be doing a American flags pattern over the top of that and I've already tested this but I'll just check that real quick looks like the shiny side is the side that goes towards the water I cut and measured the size that I needed for the um, film and what we're going to do now is put real light cover over one side
All right, here we go. So it doesn't really matter which way I go up. Carefully on the water. Perfect. see it before I do. Now let's go in and rinse it off. Alright, so some issues have to resolve. Overall, I really like the way it looks. But I think this time I overactivated trying to compensate for underactivating on the other one. Because it has kind of a tacky touch to it, which one of the videos I watched mentioned that if it's sticky or kind of mushy, then you're probably overactivated. So, second thing, I don't think that the problem was my base coat adhesion. I think when and if you rub off or scuff off the film then it'll pull the base coat because the film sticks so well to the base coat so like right here I touched it with a paper towel when it was still kind of damp and it pulled the film and the base coat off of it so that and as a rookie move I had my thumb right there right where it's at now and I dipped it and I left a mark on there as well so what do we need to do? Well, I would say start over, which sucks. But if I want it to look good, I need to strip this all off, back down to the bare aluminum, recoat it, and then try again. I really, really wish I had a better activator than this one. It's like the can just spurts and spits and no matter how much you shake it or whatever, it just doesn't give a smooth spray. And so, you know, I don't know. I definitely won't purchase this activator. I will purchase a different activator if I try again. But like I said a few times during this, I think I'll try the, the spray paint your spray can spray uh, gun version of it so all right with that being said I'm gonna begin the process of stripping this back off well at least it cleans up easily um, just with some acetone and shop rag I was able to wipe all of my hard work off and we can start again so we will probably re-scuff just to ensure that the scuff that was there because yeah, I'm afraid of the, the scuff is basically roughing up the surface and uh, afraid of some of those micro pores being filled with some of the paint residue or whatever so we'll go ahead and re-scuff it again 
and we'll rebase coat it again and then we'll start again if it doesn't work this time i'll probably wait till i get my blasting cabinet next week and order some of the activator in the spray gun format and do it after that but you know for now let's try again the way that we're doing it now all right all right here we are round four i think um we're about to get started i didn't record a lot of the base coating and prepping and everything else because i've already recorded that multiple times so i'm taped <clears throat> i'll show you We're back to uh, all yellow uh, with one side taped. Um, I made sure I don't put my thumb there. Make sure that's cleaned off. Uh, and so I gave myself a little spot to kind of grab. So right here where I'm pinching there and right here, uh, we'll go down at an angle like that into the liquid and then we'll go from there and hopefully have a successful round this time, so. Okay, again, shiny side down. And the triangle method here. Prayer to the activator gods that this can work. way better all right let's get in and wash it i'm not going to record that either because it takes time well i feel like we finally had our first real success with this particular dip Ooh, nice now i'm gonna ruin it by taping up this side to dip this side so the only issue with this side was due to this shape right here, created a tiny little air pocket that even though I went in like that, I actually emphasized that little air pocket, but that'll show you what an air pocket will do. It didn't go down inside that little edge. I'm gonna see if I can fix that another way, but I'm not super worried about it because it kind of just matches and looks like another one of the stripes. So, uh, but overall, really happy with the way this one turned out um so we're dry we're about to tape up this side um so that we can 
dip again without ruining this side. But I gotta tell you, this is nerve wracking. I'm really afraid of ruining this side. Uh, like I told you before, this is the delicate tape. So it's supposed to be delicate and keep from ruining things like this. So I'm going to just do gently You want a little bit of overlap so that there's not a real drastic seam. I don't want to just have like a gold line right on one corner, so. We're off the instruction book at this point. So this last go dip was perfect. Everything looks great. However, my biggest fear ended up coming true, which is when I pulled the tape off, it pulled a tiny, I don't know if you can see it right there, pulled a tiny little bit of the stuff off. Um, so, <laughs> I am going to attempt to repair that little spot. And while I don't want to dip and spray and everything else and strip everything off, what I think I can do is just turn it dark color using some aluminum black, aluminum black or whatever you want to call it. And I think that if I do that prior to Prior to um, spraying it, all right, we're back. My last video got cut short. My daughter's 17, screaming at me to go get her from work. But either way, um, our little experiment worked. We used a Luma Black to fix the one little spot where it had pulled out. She can't hardly tell anymore, which is fantastic. Uh, the dip looks really, really good. Uh, there's not any missing parts on it. It looks, I mean, I'm, I'm really, really happy with it. So we gotta clear coat it. So let's go ahead and get that done. Looks like this clear coat kind of interacts with this particular film. Hmm. I'm gonna let that dry and then uh, we'll come back and do a couple more coats and call it a day. All right, thanks. So we finished doing our hydro dips, the hydro dip for the school, as well as the hydro dip for my own personal uh, use here. And uh, let's go over it. So this is the one that we did for the school. Uh, there's a few issues where it looks like the film pulled away the base coat. Um, kind of has like a battle worn look to it. Um, where the dip and the base uh, are, they it turned out all right. Um, you know, this is this isn't going anywhere, or doing anything. It's a it's a paperweight because of the model that it came from. So, um, 
if you see this and you want it, uh, somebody sees this YouTube video and you want this, just say, I want that. It. You see? And uh, the comments, and if you've got an FFL, I'll send it to you, and maybe you can make your own OA96 out of this uh, uh, lower, so. Uh, now for the one that I did myself, and it's really hard not to be very frustrated by this. Um, this looked really, really good. Um, I took some pictures right before uh, I clear coated and I was pretty happy with it. And then the clear coat that I got from the school, um, it like reacted with this film and it just really kind of pocketed it all up. Um, which sucks because this was my second uh, third attempt hydro dipping and second attempt on this particular lower. Um, I've had a few people say, oh, I like it the way that it is. It, you know, looks antique or looks like it's supposed to look like that. Uh, but it's just really frustrating when right before I clear coated, this was really clear and uh, you could see all the detail and it was real defined. This flag right here looked great. You can see the stripes wrapping around it. Uh, so the lesson is I definitely will never use that clear coat again. Um, I really liked the base coat that I used for this. It was made by, um, what was it called? One, One Hit Wonder, OHW is what they call it. Um, so I think I'll probably stick with that brand. I'd like to try their clear coat. Uh, I think this will still look cool. I've got some extra parts, lower pieces and kits and pins and whatnot. I think I have enough to, to, to finish out this lower. So I'm gonna try and finish out this lower. I'm not gonna do it on this video because I don't want YouTube to take down my assignment. So, um, but I'm gonna go ahead and, and finish this out and just see how it looks with all the black accents on it. And um, we'll see how it goes. But overall, I learned a lot. Um, I don't think I'll do this again until I have my blasting cabinet all set up. Um, and then I think, I don't think I'll rattle can a uh, base coat or a clear coat or anything like that. I think I'd like to try this, but I'd like to do it more professionally. So uh, once I get the blasting cabinet and the um, spray gun and stuff in, which should be in the next week or two, I'll order, I'll order the activator um, I really, really struggled with that activator that they sent, that the school sent. Um, and I think I'd like to try this same look again. Uh, I have a buddy that has an AR-10 and he wants it done in this same style. Uh, so I think what I'll do is once I have all the right tools, I'll attempt this again. Um, I will say that doing, doing a hydro dip is a lot more involved than it appeared in the videos. There's just a lot of timing uh, between getting the base coats down, getting the water heated up, getting the you know film cut and spaced, getting the tape down for the borders, getting it dipped, you know, one minute in the water, 20 seconds for the for the activator, and then racing inside so that I could wash off the um, uh, film after the activation or whatever after I dipped it it just is it's like a, it's just a, a you know it's really involved process uh, I think once I get set up a little bit better um, I'll be able to produce some pretty cool results so I'm happy with this uh, I'm happy with what I did uh, this was definitely um, a learning experience here uh, but overall uh, pretty pleased with where we're at and uh, hope in the future that you'll see other videos of me doing this that um, it doesn't look quite so, uh, what's the word, amateur. All right, well, that's that. I appreciate uh, you guys following along with this and uh, if you stay tuned um, right at the end of this, I'll, I'll try and show uh, uh, what this looks like all with, with all the parts on it, so. All right, thanks a lot. All right, we're all finished. I did have enough parts to put together a complete lower. Um, 
so I suppose that means I need to order another upper, which my wife will be very pleased about. So, um, I think it looks all right, you know? Obviously, I would have liked it a little bit better had the clear coat not kind of messed it up. Um, and, you know, who knows? Uh, it's not something I can sell because it's an 80%, a completed 80% or whatever, so it's 100% uh, now, but uh, it doesn't have a cereal. So, uh, it'll go into my collection as my first hydro dip. Um, my, what do you want to call it? My Don't Tread On Me AR. Uh, these are all just extra pieces out of my AR box or what, so it's just a standard AR trigger, not a drop in. and. Standard grips, standard um, AR uh, or M4 style uh, uh, buttstock, but yeah, I think it turned out all right. Um, everything in it is functional, uh, which is good because this is the first time this has been put together, so it's nice to know that it milled out correctly. Um, empty magazine here, so uh, locks in, uh, releases. Safety works. So, yeah. I think it'll make a pretty cool looking uh, firearm when it's all finished. We'll, this will all be black and this will just be the only spot there that's kind of got the yellow and the flags or what. So, yeah, pretty happy with the uh, the end result here. All right. Well, thank you very much. Thanks for the, the learning opportunity and uh, uh, good luck to anyone else who's taking this class. All right. Bye.